it just summarizing it, it and it, this is sort of my view of, of the way things are. You can disagree maybe, but this is great. 70%, 75% keeps you out of the hospital, keeps you from dying. So I don't think you worry necessarily uh, about the difference in the efficacy numbers because we don't know what a second shot would be. Uh, also, it's, it's, it's one dose. It's stable because it's, it's DNA. It, can, it doesn't need to be stored at such low temperature. So this is, this is great news. I want to ask you whether there might be advantages. Do we know with the ADNO towards uh, better immunity in terms of T cells? Do, do, do we know that, that the messenger RNAs now match up uh, dollar for dollar, if you will, with the ADNO based um, vi uh, vaccines? Yeah, this, this is great news, and, and Alex and his team should be very proud. I remember the phone call that we got when um, Pfizer was announced the results and how, how proud people felt on that phone call. It was an emotional call, um, learning how effective that vaccine was. Um, I think that there is emerging evidence that the mRNA vaccines as well elicit a T-cell response. I mean, part of the virtue or the perceived virtue of the J&J &J vaccine is that it seems to be eliciting a strong T-cell response, and they actually did very good um, preclinical work, very good work in vitro in, in test tubes to try to ascertain the scope of that T-cell response as well as in patients. And so they have good data to demonstrate that. Um, I think we believe now that the mRNA vaccines are also eliciting uh, a T-cell re response that could be quite strong. So you're getting a full complement of immune protection from the mRNA vaccines as well, based on the evidence that we have so far. And none of these questions are answered Definitively, we're going to need more data to answer these questions. But you're, you're dealing with an environment where we now have three effective vaccines, and patients really should take the vaccine that's offered to them. Definitely. Uh, um, the, I was also asking uh, the state of the art as far as science goes. You can modify a, uh, they could modify their virus fair, or their vaccine quickly as well, even though it's a different technique. Th does messenger RNA? have an advantage in how quickly you can change the software, just to call it that? Yeah, they're both synthetically derived vaccines. I think that the process for modifying the mRNA, our mRNA vaccines is a little bit more straightforward, a little bit, a little bit faster. They're using a double-stranded DNA in that viral vector that then gets right. translated into mRNA once it's injected. But they have the ability right. also to modify that fairly efficiently as new variants come onto the market. And then... I, I know that we don't have the data. W what do you think the probability is that once you're vaccinated and you've had the immunity, that you're no longer, even if you're asymptomatic or whatever, that you're no longer going to be able to transmit the virus? Don't you think seeing previous demonstrations of this over the years with vaccines, don't you think we can be fairly confident that you will not be a person that, that transmits the virus to someone else after you get one of these vaccines and you have immunity? Don't, what, what do you think the probability is? 80 percent? I mean, we're still afraid to say it. Well, yeah, well, I mean, look, I think personally, I think it's 100 percent. I think that there's a reduction in transmission. Right. The question is, what's the magnitude of that? Now, you know, we don't have the definitive study to prove that, but the Accumulating evidence is very convincing that there was a reduction in transmission, the real-world evidence coming out of Israel. The data that J&J &J developed in their clinical trial suggests a strong reduction in transmission. So I think most people agree that there's a reduction in transmission. People who are, who are vaccinated are less likely to transmit the infection if they do become infected themselves. The question is the magnitude, and, and there's a growing consensus that the magnitude could be quite strong. Now, this needs to be worked out. I think we're going to answer this question more definitively within the next month or two. J&J &J had tantalizing data where they showed a 74 percent reduction. They did serial screening on patients in the clinical trial. So they tested them whether they had symptoms or they didn't and showed a 74 percent reduction in asymptomatic uh, infection, which is a pretty good indication that there's a reduction in transmission. So we're starting to see pretty good data sets now that answer that question. Um, with, with more conviction. So I think that we can reasonably say, yes, there's a reduction in transmission. The question is, what's the magnitude of that effect? Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.